Welcome to another episode of the Dynamic Thriving Podcast. I am your host, Mary Ann Pack, spiritual medium, oracle for the many, and joy advocate, helping you to all of your life transformation. And um, I just wanted to welcome our guest today. Nancy Berger is with me. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Mary Ann. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for being my guest. And I wanted to let you know, we met through Ladies Power Lunch, and you hear me talk all the time about Ladies Power Lunch, because we are in collaboration with them. And they are a free Facebook group that, ladies, you can join. We have one rule, it's easy, that we intentionally support one another so that we all rise. And um, you can visit them on Ladies Power Lunch under groups under Facebook, or you can go to their website, ladiespowerlunch.com. So we're going to jump right in, Nancy, and ask you the tough question first. Who is Nancy and what good do you bring into the world? <laughs> well, wow, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big question. A um, big and- I am, among other things, like being a mom and um, being a friend and being a sister and um, being a co-creator with you, Marianne, I am uh, a fear strategist. So what I do through my uh, platform, the Fear Finding Project, is I help people change their relationship with fear. And what that means is I help people learn how to embrace fear as a good friend and an ally and and how that process can help them reframe fear-based thinking so they can get unstuck in their life, get unstuck in relationships, get unstuck in their work. That is, wow. (laughs) Fear (laughs) strategist, don't we need that? You're also an author, speaker, and coach. And uh, today's uh, topic is reframing your fear-based thoughts. Yeah. So we definitely need a whole lot more of this because all of us have experienced fear, no matter if it's big, small, or in between. So we all can relate to fear. So what's the problem that you help your clients solve? What is that transformation that they receive when they work with you? The big transformation is an understanding that fear is not something to avoid. Mm. The big transformation is understanding that stuffing it down and ignoring it and trying to fight it and crawl over the top of it and pretend it doesn't exist and be fearless is not the answer. That The answer lies sort of like Dorothy and a ruby slippers. The answer lies within each of us. Once we can understand and unpack the fears that we have, where they came from, how we cultivated them, then we can accept them, embrace them, and change our thinking around them. So the big transformation is in learning. You have the power right now to change your fear-based thoughts. And it's just working through a process of understanding how that works and practicing the strategies. And it it can affect really big change for people. Wow. Yeah, um, <clears throat> when we're yeah when we're in that fear place, sometimes it's just paralyzing. Yeah, and other times it's just a fear that it's something we just need to step into because the other side is going to be awesome. Exactly, and you raise a really good point, Marianne, and that is the discernment between the types of fear because it's it's kind of poetic that the 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 types of fears that are triggered so that we protect ourselves are actually originate in a completely different part of the brain than right. the fears we're talking about, like fear of failure, you know, insecurities, all those kind of anxieties that we have. But like when, when there's a tiger in the room or when there's a car, you know, veering across the, the double line in the highway, that fear is survival mode fear. That's amygdala. That's in a different part of your brain. And we need that to protect ourselves. It's kind of like our spidey sense, you know, you know not to go down the dark alley, you know not to... And we need that and that's essential. But a big part of my course and a big part of my teaching is discerning between those types of fears. Mm -hmm. Because the fears that are in our sort of logical brain, our cortex, those are the dread and anxiety and all those things that keep us stuck in dynamics that sometimes just don't serve us at all. But we can change our thinking around that and with practice and, and, and commitment, we can really cause our brains to fire differently, create different neural pathways so that we automatically sort of lean in 
and change the fear-based thinking. And then, then it's just so liberating for people. Yes. Yes. And I, I teach a lot about remembering who we really are on the yes. inside, the spirit, yeah. um, you know, our inner being, our inner source, because so many times when we actually can tune into that intuition, that inner knowing is just, it alleviates fear also because we understand who we are. And that's another part you were talking about it being, you know, shifting your thinking, shifting those patterns, because we've trained our brain to look for fear, to mm -hmm. look for situations. And we can just as easily train it to look for good, for things that are positive, things that are going well, that we don't have to fear. Absolutely. And, and sometimes I think there's a fallacy where people think, oh, well, the power of positive thinking and it gets an eye roll. And we're mm -hmm. not talking about positive thinking necessarily. We're talking about intentional thinking, right? right? You know, and as you say, embracing who you are, part of embracing who you are, it's kind of reminding yourself of when you were in discovery and exploration mode all the time, which really is when we're younger. You know, when we're like, you know, seven, eight, nine, we're, we're in discovery mode and failures are not deterministic for us then. You know, we get up on the bike, we fall off the bike and it, it's a bummer, but we get back on the bike. Why? Because we really want to ride the bike, right? We want to ride with our friends. As we age, we lose a lot of that discovery. We lose a lot of that creative thought and, and that sort of innate problem solving because we start comparing ourselves to others and that inner dialogue kicks in that tells us, well, maybe you shouldn't and maybe you're going to look bad if you try this and maybe you'll feel stupid. And it's just a matter of training our brain, as you say, differently. And we can do it. And then once the more you do it, the more you practice it, the better you get at it, like everything else, right? Right. Yeah, it's like a muscle yeah. that, that we have to, that we definitely have to train. Mm -hmm. So what makes your approach different from other coaches? Because there are, everybody has their own secret sauce and that unique way. So what is, what is your coaching or your programs, your courses that we're going to talk about shortly? Um, what makes it very Nancy-like? What makes it, what makes it different is I start from the premise that fear is awesome. That fear is your greatest ally. It tells you everything you need to know about yourself. It's, it's almost like an encyclopedia of you and it's at your fingertips all the time. But we've been socialized to think that fear is something bad, that oh, I have to overcome this fear. I have to be fearless. I have to fight it. I have to conquer it. And no, my, the difference is bring it on. I'm going to embrace this fear and I'm going to deconstruct it a little bit. I'm going to get a little cagey. I'm going to understand what this fear is, break it down and then reframe it. Um, so it's a process. It can be done and it's just going through the steps and being comfortable, being uncomfortable a little bit, you know, leaning into those feelings that don't feel great, but they're telling you something. And as soon as we sort of can grasp that mindset, so much good change can happen. And I know because I've done it myself, you know, I spent 30 years of my life stuck in fear-based thinking so it got to the point where I was just frozen and couldn't even live my life much less my best life I was just really crippled by fear and I started to do a lot of research about how the human brain and body processes fear mm -hmm. and I went through my own process of discovery through with a great support system of clinicians and doctors and 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 figured out strategies that really helped me and then I became committed to helping other people learn these strategies because it's just no way to, it's no way to live, you know, and there's just so much abundance that we can take advantage of and, and embrace. And so that's what brought me here. Right. I love that. So when somebody is, is sitting in fear and it's just that, I know that the fear and stress and that kind of thing just really diminishes our health, our well-being. Mm -hmm. So do you see that even in clients? Are, 
does their health, does their business, does their other relationships improve when they they reframe their fear as actually a yeah. friend, not a foe? Absolutely. And and I'll tell you, and, and I recently worked with a corporate sales team um, that was having trouble with conversions, was having trouble um, uh, booking business, had no trouble talking to clients, had no trouble reaching out, uh, but had trouble converting. And it took some time to get to the root of, you know, it's a small team. Each of these people kind of had to go on their own, you know, journey of discovery as to what was holding them back. And believe it or not, you know, it usually goes back to early imprinting, first family dynamics, how we were taught, what was modeled to us, which a lot of times people just don't want to dig into that. They're like, that was then, this is now. Mm -hmm. It's on the hard drive. I don't know where we got the idea that all these things that happened to us in our life because we age, they disappear. They don't disappear. <laughs> they stay on the hard drive. And it's not it's not about blame game or, you know, this is why I'm this way and blaming it on other people or family members. Or Nothing to do with that. It has to do with understanding who you are and how you got to be this way with your own unique relationship with fear. It's fascinating. And I get a lot of aha moments like, oh my gosh, that high school audition really messed with my head. Yes. And you know, it's so once we can understand it, there's so much power in that. And you go from being in victim mindset and on the defense to being emboldened. Like, I get it. I know why I do this now. And you notice it and you change it. Yeah, because for me, you're talking about that. I, I feel like for me, my childhood with the very staunch religious background that I have, patri patriarchal system, um, it was very, it was very fear oriented, yeah. you know, and having to leave that in my mid forties, finally, um, you know, it was, it, I couldn't believe how much fear and that anguish and anxiety and, oh my gosh, I've got to beg for forgiveness again. And, and it just seemed like all that indoctrination of all those dogmas and rules right. created so much fear in me. You know, I was a sick for so many years as a young person because of this. And now that I've left and I'm in peace and I'm in joy, I don't have that. So, right. So the, the body mind connection is irrefutable, mm -hmm. right? We know it, it's irrefutable. And, you know, I, I, Unfortunately, I think there's still a little bit of stigma attached to these emotional processes and this, you know, and emotional health. But emotional health and physical health health are so closely related. And when people can let go of that, you know, toxicity, and and when you view fear as as your enemy, that, that's a built-in toxicity, right? And once you accept it and say, well, I'm going to understand this better. So I can build a courageous path for myself. Mm. It's so empowering and it, it elevates you on every level. It has to. Yes. You know? yes. So I, I feel so excited when I get through to someone and I and I see that look in their eye like, oh, oh, I, I'm understanding myself a little bit better because we all have to do it. And it and it's not obvious. Like, you know, we we get really good and, and create sort of neuro neurological accommodations for stuffing stuff down we get used to it yes um, so i'm asking people to open up those boxes again right unpack some boxes and uh and it, it it can take a little time but the right the person who comes to me and wants to do that work you know makes some wonderful discoveries about themselves yeah i think we get to the point where it just oh well that's just a normal feeling right that's all humans are supposed to be fearful but it's not. No. no. No, it's not. So I always say our mess is our message. And you kind of alluded to this a little earlier, but yeah. tell us what what was the mess that you had to transform through to do this calling, this work of this this calling? Because what we do as coaches is a calling. We've yeah. worked through something and we know that we know that we know this work will be a dynamic transformation in somebody else's life. Right. And you never, you, you, it's not obvious until it's obvious. So yeah. for me, you know, I've been a writer for 25 years. I started my career on Wall Street. I, you know, 
found out in my 40s that I was struggling with bipolar disorder. I, I, you know, I was functioning in my life with the struggles that I had. I, I had an eating disorder for 30 years, 3-0. I was functioning through, you know, I was steeped in fear all the time. Right. And it was only when I had, I was struggling in a manic period um, when I failed a, a field sobriety test in my beautiful gold minivan. Um, and the police officer, you know, said to me, I don't think this is who you are. Ooh. And I looked at that man's wow. face and I said, yeah, I don't think so either. And we had a conversation. He chose not to arrest me. We had a long conversation and that was a moment. That was a pivotal moment. I said, I'm, this is not who I am and I'm living steeped in fear and I have to change it. I have to change it. And then I started on my journey. It wasn't until, you know, another 15 years that I, ha I was in a position where I wanted to help other people do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I had to do the work myself. Oh, yeah. um, but I'm happy to say I did and the outcome was really, really a positive one. I just love that. So it wasn't so fun at the time. No, 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 no. Yeah, that would just kind of keep another angle of fear on you. Right, right. Our good. So I know you have a new course, the mm. fear formula coming out. Yes. And it's out right now. You yes. can get it. So tell us about this fear formula. Yes, it's called the fear formula, how to get unstuck and lean into courage. And it is a six module uh, evergreen, a self paced course um, that uh, walks learners through the steps uh, to reframe fear based thinking. Uh, and these are all actionable strategies that I have learned and cultivated myself in my own life that have worked for me. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of there's probably eight at least eight, uh, you know, lessons, you know, hands-on concrete lessons hmm. and, 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 and skills that learners will, will gain from this course. I also do some energy medicine techniques, you know, guided audio, guided video, um, relaxation techniques to kind of help, you know, integrate the body into the work. I'm just so excited about it because I ran a beta of this course uh, in May and just got excellent feedback and that transformation, right? People saying, oh, oh my gosh, I've never, I never realized all of the fear that I was sort of stuffing down and this really elevated me into a different place and a place of discovery and acceptance and change. Uh, so I'm, I'm very excited about this course. So the fear formula is find, enlighten, accept, and reframe. Those are the steps of the formula. That's the framework that I work, that I walk learners through. Um, and as I said, it's self-paced, it's, it's evergreen, but each module has an introductory video that I do. So there's a lot of me in it. Um, so they do, it's easy to follow, it's organized, and learners have a, have a good experience from, from the feedback I'm getting. Good. Do you also have like a Facebook group or any kind of community yes. where they can join yes. in and ask questions? Yes, there's a Facebook group, a private Facebook group, and intermittently I will be doing some Q&A on there, office hours kind of thing, and just, you know, um, working on getting the community together. Now, fear-based thinking for some people is quite personal, so I didn't make the Facebook group mandatory and I don't do Zoom group calls in the course because some of this subject matter is, is can be quite sure. personal. But um but you know I am a coach so people can can reach out to me on my website and ask questions or or get some personal coaching if they need it. So they have they do have some access with you also. Yeah if they want right. it, yes. Yeah. Right, right, right. So the course is course is already launched mm -hmm. and tell us about um how they can access it and how they can find it. Sure. And um, I know you actually have a special offer that you wanna tell everybody about. Right, so from through October 17th, so a few more days, um, I am uh, offering the course at the introductory price of $299. Um, and it's very easy to get to the course. Go to my website, which is Nancy R burger.com burger is spelled b-u-r-g-e-r nancyrburger.com backslash course 
and that will bring you to the page, uh, the sales page for the course right on my site, and you can just click on there and it'll take you straight to the, to the platform to purchase it. So you can, and these links, everybody, these links will be, of course, in the show notes for your convenience, uh, so you don't have to remember them. But um, Nancy, can you tell us uh, just, um, like, just highlight kind of what these modules, um, sure, the yeah. topics of the modules or something? Yep. So um, they're the first modules and intro. So I, you know, do an introductory video, kind of tell them what the course is going to, how it's going to be mapped out, what to expect, you know, and, and give kind of a, a primer. Uh, and then um, the first, the second module will be the find module, right? So the first step of the fear formula, that's a lot of discovery and reflection work and having, pe having learners identify their fears, right? Mm -hmm. this, then the next module is the enlightened module where you unpack them, understand them a little better. And I have worksheets and, and course materials to help them do that, to walk them through how to do that, like free write exercises, you know, um, uh, I, I have a, a fear journey template that I created that's a graphic, a visual graphic. It's like a roadmap and they can fill in different events in their life that help them cultivate their fear relationship. So it's a lot of hands-on stuff, but it's very you know, easy to follow and understand. Then we go to the accept, accept uh, portion of the fear formula. And that's where you know, we ex start to accept the fears, embrace them, understand how they're manifesting in our life, how we're creating narratives based on them, different things like that. And then we work in, work into the reframe portion, which is when we're shifting fear-based thinking. I have a something I call a fear to want activity, where I actually have learners reword their fear-based thoughts to wants, uh, which is neurologically a really powerful transformation, Absolutely. different things like that. And then we weave it all together in the end and then the sixth module with, you know, revisiting our first, you know, reflection activity. How has thing, have things changed? How have they not changed? How, how, where are you on your change journey? Do you feel like, you know, so there's just a lot of checking in, um, evaluation, people can give feedback on the course. So it's, it's, you know, it's, building blocks and every module builds on the one before so if a learner enrolls in the course and you know can't get to it like they do one module say and then they're busy with their life and they can't get to the second module for another couple of weeks the introductory video for that, that new module will recap the last one so they're not feeling you know so i tried to really be pretty organized so they could have a good experience but this is a self-paced mm -hmm. type of course so yeah. it's not like they're under pressure to get no. X, Y, Z finished by this date because it's due or something. Not at all. It's not drip. It's evergreen and they can do it at their own pace. And actually, I do not advocate for trying to, to bite off more than you can chew. This is some pretty intense work. And I think it's spreading it out a little bit, allowing yourself to process and sort of reflect is a good thing. Um, but, you know, obviously you don't want to, you know, let six months go by because then you'll forget what you did. But I do believe people need to, you know, go at their own pace and find a rhythm of their own. And really probably each section, depending on, on how much inner work they do have to do, would take them different. Because somebody may need to reflect longer, you know, exactly. and, and think about all the different steps in there and practice the tools that you're giving them yes. to kind of hone that particular skill that in that module to before they can move to the next. Exactly right. And two things I wanna say. The first is in each module on the platform, I, mm -hmm. I've done this on the Thinkific platform because I really like how user-friendly yes. it is. Um, I put how, I put a time estimate for each module in each lesson. Oh. So people kind of know what they're signing up for, uh, how much time it's going to take so they can fit it into their lives. You know, so many people are trying to juggle so many things. So I did that. And the other thing I did is there's a questionnaire at the end of each module that kind of encourages people to reflect on what, what they got out of it, where they are on this sort of change trajectory. And, um, and, and I think that's helpful too, to close some loops and then they can process a little bit before they move on to the next one. I love that. I love that giving time for that integration. Yes. Because we don't need more information. There's so much information yeah. out there. Yeah. It's taking the time to integrate it. Yeah. And That's I right. like that you also, you know, you do have a community available so mm -hmm. that if people get stumped, 
yeah. or have a question or just need an encouraging word because they're, you know, they've got maybe some fear still swirling that they're needing to address. Just that yeah. place to belong, that safe, sacred space. Yeah, it's hard work. I mean, the first things learners do in the course is they, they sign an agreement to themselves. Oh, yes. They will be kind. This is not intended to trigger harsh judgment. This is not intended to, you know, trigger inner dialogue. That's that's not, you know, that's critical. Mm -hmm. um, we need to be patient with ourselves and kind. And, and that's the first step in, in any kind of transformation, I think, really. I really believe that. But when it comes to fear, which is so emotionally charged, yes. it, it takes some of that charge out of it. It's like, okay, we're just starting from a place of, you know, self-care. That's why, that's why I hope learners come to this course, to self-care, to make a positive change for themselves, not to, you know, not to try to dance around things, but to try to really lean in. But the first step is that I'm going to be nice to myself through this process. I love it. I love it. Yes, let's be nice to ourselves. You know, this is something we all have to work through. Nobody yeah. escapes the fear thing. No. You know, our society, our families, our religions, our government, our whatever, those external things out there taught us to fear. Yeah. And one thing I've learned through my journey with mental health challenges and, and an eating disorder and, and the things that I've, there's so much shame associated with those yes. things. And shame fuels all of the bad feelings that we have and just, you know, amplifies them to the point where it can just become crippling. So we don't, shame is not a part of this fear formula, right? right. This fear formula is a framework for changing your relationship with fear so you can look at it as a guide, as an ally, mm -hmm. as a friend, and, and move yourself into a, a, a courageous path where you feel emboldened and like your best, the best version of you, including all of your parts, you know, to what you said earlier, who you really are, all of your parts are okay. There's no bad feeling. It's just when we start, you know, acting in ways that don't serve us, then it's time to make change. Yes. Yes, it's, it's that remembering all those hidden parts, all those parts we boxed away, all yeah. those parts that weren't safe for us, all those parts we don't want to acknowledge, you know, putting all that remembering all of our parts into the wholeness of who we really are. Yes. And we aren't driving in our gold minivan <laughs> being pulled over. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I wasn't pulled over. I actually impaled the thing on a guardrail. Oh, well then. Yeah, I don't, I, you know, go big or go home, right? That's right. Good grief. Well, I'm so thankful that you transformed through that and you saw that. You, you took notice of that and you decided it's time to make a change. Yeah, and I'm sure change. you sought help. That's why I'm so big on coaching. I love providing you all with great coaches who know exactly how to help you in different areas of your life. So take advantage of Nancy being here. Take advantage of her course. It's open. You can get it in the next few days here until October the 17th. So um, take advantage of this course. If you're seeing yourself in so much fear and it's controlling your life, and you want something better. You know life should be better. Mm -hmm. Talk to Nancy. Get a hold of her. And um, again, I'll have her website and the course link in the show notes for you. Um, and I want to thank everybody for listening today and for subscribing because this helps my work go into the world. And as a joy advocate, I love to sprinkle that stuff everywhere. <laughs> so be sure and visit our website, maryannpack.com for all of our services. And um, I'm just so thankful, Nancy, that you came and shared your life with us and your transformation so that it gives us hope for transformation. Thank you, Thank you for what you do. And thanks for having me today. All the I appreciate you. Do you have any closing words of wisdom you'd like to leave us with? 
just just want to thank you again for having me today for the work that you do and to everyone that's listening i just want to share that change is is possible and uh and and practice makes possible so i hope you'll visit my site and uh, learn more about the fear formula and and if it works if it's aligned with what you need mm -hmm. take the plunge and give it a try i think we could all uh, benefit from the fear formula. That's for sure. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks, Marianne. And remember, everyone, you are joy looking for a way to express.